Thank you, Father, for the time that you have given us. Thank you for this presentation. We pray for wisdom, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to welcome you all in a very special way. We are truly thankful and grateful for this opportunity which God has given us. I want to welcome you all to those who are already in Sabbath. May the Lord bless you. And to those who are waiting for the Sabbath to begin, God bless you. And today we are focusing on this subject to the high cost of Abraham's mistakes. We're talking about compromise. We're talking about the actual cause of Israel and Palestinian war. So this is a very serious presentation, which one we are praying that God may help us so that when we look at things, we may have a better perception or we may actually uh, have, yeah, we may have a better understanding of what is happening. We grew up... Uh, Israel and Palestinian fighting. During the time that we grew up, there was a gentleman called uh, uh, Yasser Arafat uh, fighting Benjamin Netanyahu. This has been there for a very long time and Benjamin Netanyahu is still there today and the man is still breathing fire in his mouth and is talking about crushing the Hamas at the moment no, that nobody can survive. The question is, what exactly is the problem with these two nations? What's wrong with these two people? What's wrong with Ishmael and Isaac? What's wrong with the descendants of Abraham? What's wrong? What exactly is the cause of this problem? Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand this very well. God has no desire for people to fight. God does not delight in war. But we are told in the book of, Revel uh, in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 24, 16, that uh, as we go towards the end, we are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. Th these things should not trouble us. This should see that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The bombardment in Gaza, the slaughtering that is happening in Israel on Sabbath, these things should not trouble us. The end is not yet come and the worst is yet to happen. But the question is what it really is causing all this and who is behind? We are told that certain delights in war for it excites the worst passions of the soul and then sweeps into eternity. Its victims steeped in vice and blood. It is his object to incite the nations to war against one another for he can thus divert the minds of the people from the work of preparation to stand in the day of God. That's GC page 589. So the devil excites people to fight. The devil delights in people dying. The devil delights in people suffering. This is his desire and he is causing this. So what we see in Hamas, what we see in Israel, or what we see in Palestine rather, rather than Hamas, we see the devil instigating the two groups to fight. But now, why exactly, why, why is this happening this way? It is simply because God is withdrawing his spirit from the earth. We are told from the book Maranatha, page 174, the judgments of God are in the land the wars and rumors of wars, the destruction by fire and flood say clearly that the time of trouble, which is to increase until the end, is very near at hand. We have no time to lose. The world is a state with the spirit of war. The prophecies of the 11th of Daniel have almost reached their fulfillment. So the prophecies of the 11th of Daniel have almost reached their fulfillment. So therefore this will happen. And we have actually realized that this is caused by the devil. And the people who are fighting, these are actually brothers. Palestine and Israel, these are brothers. These are the descendants of Abraham as we are going to uh, 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 discuss shortly. But now look at what is happening, brothers and sisters. I want to take you to the headlines because even the world is taking sides today. America has decided to stand with Israel. But the question is, who is going to stand with Palestine? I was listening yesterday to realize that there are quite a lot of nations who are also standing with Palestine. So the question is, will this war end? Uh, it's, uh, it's sad to say, brothers and sisters, it will not end. But now let's look at these headlines. This was Guardian on, th uh, on uh, Thursday, the 13th of uh, October, 2023. Hamas attacked deadliest day for Jews since the Holocaust, says Biden, as Israel just pound Gaza. So they say this was a terrible day. Uh, this attack was very cruel. It was not just hate, but pure cruelty against the Jewish people. 
So the Jewish people and the Muslims, the descendants of Isaac, the descendants of Ishmael fighting. But now, I want to go to the red word. It says, uh, this is uh, uh, Joe Biden. He said, we cannot be silenced because silence is complacency. Biden said, I refuse to be silent. He said, he, he had spoken against to, again to Benjamin Netanyahu and that, uh, and that the U.S. was surging additional military assistance to Israel's defense forces. So U.S. is busy adding assistance military to destroy. And now as we're going to see shortly, children are dying in Gaza. People are dying large numbers in Gaza. Will they also assist those who are suffering? Will this bring an end to this problem? Is this the best thing to do? Brothers and sisters, these are now the people of Israel, the people of Palestine. These are now instruments in the hands of the devil to destroy one another. Unfortunately, some of the nations have decided to take side to help these nations destroying one another. And the real power behind is the power of the devil. Now look at what he said. He added that the deployment of the U.S. military ships and aircraft closer to Israel should be seen as a signal to Iran, which backs is Islamist groups, Hamas and Lebanon. Hezbollah, we made it clear to the Iranians, be careful, Biden said. So in other words, uh, Biden says, do not try to interfere. If you interfere, we are going to deal with you as well. Gaza Strip is a very small place. But now, the amount of weaponry that is being prepared for Gaza, the amount of soldiers, over 300 soldiers, now are preparing for war. The amount of tanks, this is beyond, this is pure madness. But now we're told that uh, they are now preparing, Israel is expected to launch a ground force in Gaza in a few days' time. Uh, and after the death of 1,200 Israelis, but now the number has increased. And now the number of Palestinians dying is also, also, has also increased. But now, brothers and sisters, it's actually very interesting just to have a look at what is happening. So just have a look at this clip. A region that's seen so much bloodshed is witnessing its worst violence in a generation. Israel is responding with full force to a surprise attack by Hamas militants. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed his country will exact an unprecedented price after thousands of rockets launched from the Gaza Strip rained down on Israel late yesterday, hitting several cities, including Tel Aviv. A ground assault soon followed with armed Hamas fighters crossing over the border. Israel is now taking its revenge with the Gaza Strip and West Bank under fire. The death toll on both sides is climbing now at 480. And a warning, this story is confronting. Now let's have a look at um, the next clip. One of the world's most enduring conflicts reignites with a bang. And it was one Hamas wanted everyone to see. Its own cameras filming as militants blew their way through what was once considered an impenetrable border. Invading Israel by land, by sea, and from above, drones dropping bombs, and here, motorised paragliders with machine guns. They dragged Israeli soldiers from tanks and shot them dead in military checkpoints. And let's have a look at the final one. Israel's threatened to further increase its bombardment of the northern Gaza Strip, but the armed group has responded by calling on Palestinians to stay in their homes. Israeli airstrikes have killed more than 1,500 Palestinians since Saturday when Hamas launched its military operation. Israel has dropped 6,000 bombs on Gaza since the war with Hamas began, and more keep falling every hour. More than 423,000 Palestinians, that's nearly 20% of Gaza's population, have now been forced from their homes. Johnny Brothers and sisters, this is horrific. The devil kills without mercy. But the question that will be asked by many people is, how did these nations end up fighting? What's the origin of the Palestinians? Or what's the origin of their forefather Ishmael? What's the origin of Isaac? This is where the issue is. I want to take you to the book of Genesis chapter 16, verse 1. The Bible says, Now Sarah Abraham's wife bare him no children. And she, she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. 
And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord has restrained me from bearing, uh, bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that uh, I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened unto the voice of Sarah. So now there was a handmaid. This, is the, this, is, this was Hagar. But now she was an Egyptian. How did Abraham ended up having an Egyptian as a maid in his house? Verse 3, the Bible says, And Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelled 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to his wife, uh, to be his wife. And he went into Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. So Hagar, an Egyptian, was married to Abraham. This was a marriage of compromise, a pagan getting married, being married to somebody who believes in the God of heaven. And now as she was pregnant, she despised her mistress. But how did Abraham ended up having this wife? You realize that in Genesis chapter 12, verse 9, Abraham journeyed to the south and then he ended up in Egypt because of the famine. So as he arrived in Egypt, the question is, did God say to Abraham, go to Egypt? No. Abraham decided to go to Egypt in search for greener pastures for his wealth. And as he was in Egypt, this is where he met this lady. And what happened in Egypt, we are told that Abraham ended up trading his wife. In fact, he decided to, he was afraid of the Egyptians. Therefore, he lied to Egyptians about his wife. That's Genesis chapter 12 from verse 14. And uh, as he lied, his wife was taken by the king of Egypt. Chapter 12, verse 14 to verse all the way down to verse 16. But I want to go to the quotation of Patrick and Prophets, page 130, paragraph 1. It says, During his stay in Egypt, Abraham gave evidence that he was not free from human weakness and imperfection. In concerning the fact that Sarah was his wife, he betrayed a trust of the divine care, a lack of that lofty faith and courage so often and nobly exemplified in his life. So, Abraham's moment of weakness is revealed in Egypt. He compromised the principle. He lied about Sarah, his wife. But however, it says that through lack of faith, Abraham's lack of faith, Sarah's, Sarah was plugged in great peril. It was, was placed in great peril. The king of Egypt, being informed of the, her beauty, caused her to be taken to his palace, intending to make her his wife. But the Lord, in his great mercy, protected Sarah by sending judgments upon the royal family. So it was the providence of God that saved Sarah when Abraham had compromised principle. Now let's look at the mistakes of Abraham. Mistake number one. He went to Egypt when he was not supposed to go to Egypt. Mistake number two, he lied to the people of Egypt regarding his wife Sarah. Mistake number three, he is now married to Hagar, an Egyptian. We have no record that Hagar was converted. And it was through the marriage of Abraham to Hagar that Ishmael was born. And we are told that there was a serious jealousy within the house of Egypt. Abraham, there was a lot of commotion because of this bond, man, uh, bond woman, Hagar. So now let's look what happened when Ishmael, when Isaac was born. Chapter 21, verse 8, the Bible says, And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned, and Sarah was so the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bond woman and her son, for the son of this bond woman she shall, shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. So from that very day, Isaac and Ishmael will not dwell together. From that very day, Isaac and Ishmael will not share an inheritance. From that very day, the descendants of Isaac, the descendants of Ishmael, they will not see eye to eye. The Palestinian and the Israelites will fight until the end. What exactly caused this? It was because of the mistake of Abraham. Now, verse 2 of the Bible says, And God said to Abraham, Let it not grieve uh, 
be grievous in thy sight because of the lead and because of thy, the, thy bond woman. In all that, that Sarah had, had said unto thee, in all that has say, had said, sorry, let me start again. In all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So just listen to Sarah. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. What of in Ishmael? No. So is Ishmael a descendant of Abraham? Biologically, but spiritually, no. Because uh, you only become a descendant of Abraham if you believe in the God that Abraham worshipped. No idols. If you believe in the God that Abraham worshipped, salvation only by Jesus Christ. Therefore, brothers and sisters, there is a problem between the Israelites of today and the Palestinians of today. And these people, they believe the same. The Israelites of today, they have rejected the God of heaven. The Palestinians of today, they don't accept Jesus Christ as a savior. And the devil has taken advantage of the situation. Now you realize that, you know, as there was a problem in the, in the house of Abraham, the Bible makes it very clear in uh, the book of uh, Genesis chapter 21 that uh, Abraham was sent this lady away. And she departed. And the God says in verse 18, And also of, thy, of the son of thy bondwoman will I make a nation because he is thy seed. Yes, God made him a nation. God blessed him and he sent him away. But the question is, what was the cost of the compromise? When you marry somebody who does not believe in the same God. Brothers and sisters, as children of God, we should never compromise. When we compromise, the results are catastrophic. When we compromise, we may not see the effects of the sin of compromise today, but 10 years, 20 years, or even 50 years down the line, Abraham is long gone over 1,500 years. But the effects of the compromise that he made by going to Egypt, we are feeling it today. What we see today, it is the mistakes of Abraham in taking an Egyptian as his wife and the hatred which was caused because of this is being felt today. We are told in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has unrighteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness, and what concord has Christ with Belial, or what path has he that believeth with an infidel? The question is, the child Ishmael, was he taught about the God of heaven? I want to believe that he was taught about the God of heaven, but the influence of the mother later on prevailed. This was simply because of the mistake. Brothers and sisters, to those who are not yet married, please tread carefully, because this is a serious subject. When we compromise against, the, when you compromise the principles of God, surely the time of repercussion will come. And we are told that in what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of God, of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive thee. If ever we are going to be accepted by God, if ever we are going to be saved, brothers and sisters at last, if ever we are going to be, uh, if we are ever we are going to be saved, we are to separate ourselves from anything unclean. You know, the challenge that we have is, many of us today, we seem to enjoy polygamy. But if God would have sanctioned polygamy, he would have not sent Haggai away. You know, I know countries where people can marry polygamy and that seems to have been accepted in church. Brothers and sisters, SR, page 80, paragraph 2 says, If God had sanctioned polygamy, he would not have thus directed Abraham to send away Hagar and her son. He would teach all a lesson in this, that the rights and the happiness of the marriage relationship 
are to be ever respected and guarded. Even at a great sacrifice, Sarah was the first and only true wife of Abraham. She was entitled to rights as a wife and mother which no other could have in the family. So brothers and sisters, when you have come to Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter that you are having three wives. You need to give up and you need to go back to your first wife. Difficult is it? Oh yes. When we have come to Jesus Christ, when we have repented, then we need to go to the principles of God. A man is to be married only to one wife. Therefore, you give up all the other women that you may have had. It says she reverenced her husband, calling him Lord, but she was jealous, lest his affections should be divided with Hagar. Oh, yes. Brothers and sisters, women are very jealous, and I agree with them. Even God said, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. You cannot afford a situation where you have more than one wife. That's ungodly. And it's not the most ideal for the family. God has designed that a man should have one wife. The compromise of Abraham was very bad. And today, this is the reason of this compromise. This war which is happening between Israelites and Palestinians is the result of this compromise. It says, Abraham was reproved by the angel of distrusting God's power, which had led him to take Hagar as his wife and to think that through her, her promise would be fulfilled. You know, God will never use the tools of the devil. Well, let me actually rephrase it. God will never go against his word to fulfill his promise. God will not disobey what he has said. If God says something, he will definitely fulfill what he said. Brothers and sisters, we should never compromise, no matter the cost. This reminds me of Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine of uh, wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he would not defile himself. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter the cost. It doesn't matter where you are. Compromise is serious repercussion. And Daniel made this decision. CSA page 54 paragraph 5 says, In reaching his decision regarding uh, Daniel and the Hebrew boys, the Hebrew youth did not act uh, presumptuously but in firm reliance upon God. Therefore, we should rely on God, stand on the principle. They did not choose to be, the, be singular, but they would be so rather than, says they did not choose to be, the, to be singular, but they would be so rather than dishonor God. Should they compromise with wrong? In this instance, by yielding to the pressure of circumstances, their departure from principle would weaken their sense of right and their abhorrence of wrong. The first wrong step would lead to others until their connection with heaven saved. They would be swept away by temptation. Therefore, brothers and sisters, one compromise will lead to another until our connection with God has been cut off completely. Isaiah chapter 59 makes it clear that our sins have separated us from God. So the moment we compromise and compromise, we come to the point where we would give up completely on God. Our calling page 269 says, Daniel and his fellow followers realized that principle was at stake and that they could afford to make no compromise with the tempter. The light and truth reflected from the throne of God were dear to them than any honor that men could bestow. It is the privilege of the young people of today to be as firm and true, as modest and successful as were the Jewish youth in the kingdom of Babylon. God honored Daniel and his fellow, and he will honor every youth who takes the course that Daniel took in honoring God. Brothers and sisters, Let's not compromise be found among us. To compromise in music. To compromise in dressing. To compromise in marriage. To compromise in Sabbath keeping. To compromise in eating unhealthy foods. May the Lord help us never to compromise. For the cost of compromise 
it's so severe as we can see in the descendants of Abraham today, as we can see in the descendants of Isaac and Ishmael today. This is a compromise in the marriage between those who worship God and those who do not worship God. And Daniel has set an example for us. Let the consequences be, but let the children of God never compromise the standard which God has set. Conflict and Courage 248 says, What if Daniel and his companions had made a compromise with those hidden officers and had yielded to the pressure of the, of the occasion by eating and drinking as the customary with the Babylonians? That single instance of departure from the principle would have weakened their sense of right and their abhorrence uh, of wrong indulgence of appetite would have invoked invoked the sacrifice of physical vigor clearness of intellect and spiritual power one wrong step would probably have led to others until their connection with the heaven being saved they would have been swept away by temptation therefore brothers and sisters by the message of God, let's stand on the principles of God. A principle is a principle, and a principle should never be compromised. ML page 77 says, Christ did not for an instant seek to purchase peace by a betrayer of sacred truth. Peace could only be made by peace could not be made by a compromise of principle. It is a grave mistake too on the part of those who are children of God to seek to bridge the gulf that separates the children of light from the children of darkness by yielding principle, by compromising the truth. Brothers and sisters, we should never compromise the truth as the children of God. You know, the early believers, they said uh, it was too dear for them to compromise the truth. And they said, let there be separation or even war among us, be war between us and those who want us to compromise. We cannot set aside the principles of God. Brothers and sisters, the test is before us. The repercussions will come. We make a choice of what we want to do today. And nobody question our choice but we cannot control the consequences of our choice. The choice was made by Abraham. The consequences are being felt today. And today, brothers and sisters, we are making a choice, but we will not be able to choose the consequences. What are we going to choose today? If we choose to abide by the principles of God, we are definitely going to experience the consequences of abiding by the principles of God. But if we choose to rebel against God, we are definitely going to experience the consequences and we cannot make a choice of the experiences that we are going to experience. I want to end on this quotation. It will be surrendering the peace of Christ in order to make peace or fraternity with the world. The sacrifice is too costly to be made by the children of God to make peace with the world by giving up the principles of truth. Then let the followers of Christ settle in their minds that they will never compromise truth, never yield one iota of principle for the favor of the world. Let them hold to the peace of Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us not, we cannot afford to yield one iota of principle for the favor of the world. We cannot afford to compromise on one thing. May the Lord help us because the cost of compromise will be too great and the results may be experienced after years and years as we can see today. But we thank God for the gift of Jesus Christ. All of us can be saved. Palestinian 
and Jews by accepting Jesus Christ, they may be saved. Rather than supporting the war, we will be blessed to support the efforts of evangelism that these two nations who have rejected Jesus Christ may come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ who is the only source of peace and happiness. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father, for the time that you have given us. The world is at war. There is a lot of fighting. But great peace have they that love the Lord. And Lord, you promise you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. We pray for peace in this world, but we pray sincerely that your children may be rich by the truth. The descendants of your son Abraham may be rich by the truth that they may give their hearts to you. Thank you, Father, for the time that you have given us. Give us grace, O Lord, never to compromise the principle that you have given us. Bless us, we plead with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Until then, brothers and sisters, I look forward to see you in the next edition. May the Lord continue to bless you, uh, continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Uh, continue to share the link with colleagues and friends. And if you have got any questions, we'll be very happy to attend to your questions. And we'll be very happy also to know where you are following us from today. Until then, continue to enjoy the Sabbath. God bless.